Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion, which you might be able to see behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I wanted to talk about a relatively large philodendron, or one that has become quite large recently, and um, depending on how I'm going to bring these videos out, I have done a secondary video for this week as well, which is going to be a plant shelf of the shelf behind me. And because that shelf is now behind me, I was able to get to this plant that was on the windowsill behind other shelves before that. And also the fact I was planning on repotting it and moving it soon. That decision was taken out of my hands when this plant decided to topple over and it was very, very top heavy. And you'll understand why in a moment. So I had to then repot this. It has since moved into pond and I've put it in a location where I can get to it a bit easier. But yeah, without further ado, let me show you my philodendron Prince of Orange that is just getting a bit ridiculous at this point. Right, give me a sec and you will see the plant. So you might be able to see if I bring this higher up and probably will not get me in the screen to get all of this plant in. Apologies about the janky pot but it is now since been moved into pond and I will definitely be doing a head test with this plant because it's absolutely huge. This is obviously the newest leaf, which is still quite an orangey reddy color. It will go down to the green color that you might be able to see down below. But yeah, you can see one of its other large, large leaves and you can see now why it tipped over. It was very heavy at the very top there. And you can see this one hasn't fully gone green yet and you might be able to see the back is still a nice orangey color. The stem, let me bring this in. This is gonna be the most awkward video ever, but you might be able to see why it decided to basically faint. So I had to put a lot of support sticks to kind of get it upright. It's since been moved into pond just to make my life a bit easier when it comes to watering this. You might be able to see if I move this plant around without dropping every other plant in the conservatory down. You might be able to see that leaf right there has got some bleaching from the sun because this was right in a window, but I couldn't really move it. So I'm just like, you're just gonna have to get on with it. And the rest of the leaves weren't really in much of a problem anyway, but quite glad I eventually did repot this because the worry with this is if it did stay in that kind of fallen down position for too long, there was gonna be problems basically. So yeah, let me put this down because it is very heavy and we can talk about it without me holding a very heavy plant. Okay, no longer holding a very, very heavy plant because you've seen the size of the plant now and you've seen the size of the pot and that was pond as well, so. <laughs> That's, I would guess, at least a few kilos. But anyway, let's talk a bit more about how I kind of got that plant to the place where it is at the moment. So in the previous property that I was based in, it wasn't getting the best, best light, but I found that it didn't struggle too much. It was a good, and I don't know what this might be in Imperial ID metric, so it was at least three and a half to four meters back from a south facing window on a shelf. So it was getting some ambient kind of low to medium light, I would say in that house, just purely because of how bright it was in that living room. Um, and it was definitely leaning. That's when the leaning first started. I've got it in a position now where I should start to be able to start seeing it move upwards rather than leaning across because that was what was causing the problem of it wanting to topple over basically. So I had to kind of like prop it up against things. So hopefully now it will start going up because it's, no, it's not just got a window in front of it now, it's got a window directly above it and it can see the light from above. So hopefully it will start, the leaves will start moving upwards because even the leaves will kind of turn towards the rotation of where the light is coming from essentially. I've had that going on, I don't know, about two, three years now. So I've had it for a while. So it does, it did take a while to get to where it was. It was in a very light, airy soil mix almost leaning towards orchids uh, of just being straight bark. There was a tiny bit of like coca in there and some perlite, but it was very, very airy. It was in a terracotta pot. It was loving life. It's getting fertilized every second watering, even throughout the winter. I picked this up from a local 
plant shop. I think that was possibly one of the first plants that I got from one of my favorite local plant shops, which is the plant den here in Norwich. And um, it has since grown into a beast. I mean, it was a big plant when I got it from them. It wasn't a very, very small juvenile plug plant, but it has got so much larger. I think some of the lowest leaves that you can see on that plant, they were probably about this big, were from when I originally bought it. And looking at the plant now, the, the newest leaves are kind of, I can't even get it, it's in frame, probably about that large. So definitely kind of coming up in size. The good thing that I have noticed about that, and I will talk a bit about light and how you get the coloration. So when it was in a medium to low light situation, it would still get that orange leaf coming through. It wouldn't stay orange, it wouldn't stay colored for very long before it kind of faded into green. Since moving it into the conservatory in all the different positions, because it was getting more light in here, the, the orange would stay for a lot longer. It would start off as a very, very deep red, and then go into a bright orange, and then it would go into like kind of a maroony, kind of muddy orange towards brown, and then it would slowly, I think there's usually a point where it's a bit yellowy as well, and then it will go into a full green. But the difference between the lower medium lights situation that I had in the previous house where that would happen all in the span of about a couple of weeks. That whole process now, and again, I don't know if it's because it's larger leaves, I'm assuming it's probably because of the light, that can now take a couple of months. So that gives you an indication that like you can see the other leaf hadn't gone fully green yet before a new leaf had not only emerged, but it started to change colors itself. So that's something to bear in mind with this plant. I know there's a lot of different versions of the same type of philodendron, I think. I'm not sure, it might be an aerobescence, the, the original stock plant that all of these things have been hybridized from, because I'm assuming they're hybrids or man-made hybrids, essentially, in order to display that coloration, because there's the Prince of Orange, there's Macaulay's Finale, there's the Cherry Red, there's a Sunrise one that I got recently as a plug plant, because I liked what it looked like. I ideally would love to get a Cherry Red or a Macaulay's Finale, but I don't have the space for something this large at the moment, so I'd love to find them as plug plants. They're not around just yet. I'm assuming, as with this, that eventually they started, you could get the larger plant and the plug plant. Eventually we'll see some of those come out in smaller plug plants, and at that point I will probably pick one up, essentially. But um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about the philodendron prince of orange very simple easy to care for philodendron it's one of the philodendrons that i've never really stressed about i kind of let it get on with what it needs to do low fuss for me is definitely a plus and that plant definitely has that it's kind of one of the ones that i'm just like there you go do your thing you'll be fine and actually to be fair it's not just that one a lot of the plants even the fussy ones the more you hover over them and try to keep them happy the more challenging it is a lot of the times I find and some of the best people who are who collect the rarer types of aroids or aroids in general the ones that tend to be slightly more forgetful waterers are the ones that you get the really beautiful specimens from and all the rest of us are over loving our plants and hovering essentially we tend to be the ones that have the struggles so that maybe tells you something but that's just been in my opinion my experience, you guys might have your own experiences and different opinions, and that is valid. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say for this one. If you've got any questions and comments, as always, please do drop them down below. I'd love to have that conversation with you. And yeah, I think that's everything for now. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly hope that you have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.